Hello, everybody. Today, we are back again in Space Engine with a very highly requested galaxy that we're going to be searching in today. And here is that galaxy. Uh, it may not look like much, but this is IC1101, which is also known as the largest galaxy we have ever discovered. And here is a quick size comparison. So here is the size of the Milky Way galaxy compared to this galaxy we're about to search in today and compared with other pretty popular galaxies. So it's just crazy the size of it. It almost looks like the Milky Way would just be like a star cluster or a nebula inside of this galaxy. So let's go and search inside of it. All of these really bright dots are gonna be different nebulas. So let's go to this one. This is a planetary nebula. And wow, that looks cool. I don't actually see any stars in here except for just this central one, which is probably the remnant of the supernova that caused this. Okay, let's look for something right outside of this then. So let's just look in this system maybe okay here we go no way we pick up life on the first system we find it is subglacial um which if you don't know is meaning there is life underneath the ice on this little moon but it's a pretty cool looking moon it's got this like different scratch surface with different crater impacts and it's got a few different colors on it so with this you can really get a view of the galaxy and that nebula that we are right next to so let's go ahead and land on this check out the surface what this kind of looks like oh whoa it's got more colors than i thought it's got got pinkish and greenish hues to it. Um, let's go right here. This looks like a good spot. All right, and we look up into the sky. We're gonna see that nebula and the galaxy, but let's go realistic lighting. So even in a realistic lighting, um, if you look up into the sky, you would still be able to see that nebula and the galaxy. So it'd be weird to be living in a galaxy like this because you don't really have that very unique looking galaxy thing going across the sky like we have on Earth or in other spiral galaxies. Uh, let's go ahead and wait for night on this and see what that might look like. Okay, so at night, uh, it looks like we're still getting a lot of brightness from this gas giant that we're next to and um, another moon in this gas giant's orbit, it looks like. And that's going to really dominate your night sky. When you have something big and bright like that, you're going to get a lot of light pollution and not really be able to pick out many other things. But if we have an HDR lighting, we can kind of see more. And we're on the opposite side, so we're not going to see that nebula. This is that little system all of these little dots you're seeing. So let's go to a different nebula like this blue one here Maybe this is another planetary nebula. Oh, whoa, this looks like a like a giant cell Um, and if you get far away check that out. Okay, let's look uh, just in the stuff around here Whoa, what is this planet? Oh, it's a water world. I thought the the clouds were rocks. This is covered in water Um, we have atmospheres turned off. So this is this is more what we're kind of working with and that is a very beautiful planet Actually, check that out one day on this planet. It's only 13 hours. I don't think there's any surface it is just straight up green water. That is a little bit gross looking, um, but let's get a little closer and see what it, what this kind of looks like. So it's got a pretty thick atmosphere, it looks like. It's like really blocking out a lot of light. We're kind of in like a sunset area though. Oh, that's bright. Let's go in the day. Can we even see the star? Okay, there's the star. Um, and what kind of star? Oh, whoa. Okay, two stars. Um, and they're kind of overlapping in this spot we're in, which gives a really cool effect. Um, very, very bright in the sky. Um, and this, this is a pretty lonely planet, honestly. It's just got some water. It doesn't have life, um, but maybe it will one day. Let's go look at these stars, actually. I want to see these. So here's uh, one of these stars, and there's the other one. They look, looks like this one's a bit smaller. Can we see our orbit lines, maybe? Okay, so they're actually in a very, very tight um, binary relationship. You can see they're very, very close to each other. I don't know if this could exist realistically, I feel like they would tear each other apart. Because um, like in Universe Sandbox, if I was building a system that looked like this, uh, they would definitely tear each other apart. And then it's got a few planets going out here. Very, very cool little system. Um, so what we're going to do now, let's try to fly more towards the center of the galaxy because I feel like the star concentration will be higher. Okay, I think we're finally in the center. I think they are a little more concentrated as we get closer. Let's search for life in the center though. Um, let's go for uh, temperate marine Terra. And let's we won't search for life yet. We'll just search, search for planets that look like Earth. Okay, there is a lot um, maybe these ones do have life too. There's a chance. Yeah, here we go. Cool marine Terra with life. All right, so this is an Earth-like planet, a little bit colder than Earth. And here is that planet, a very beautiful planet, actually. There is water and land, which, is, you know, is good for life. And we have a few different surface patterns, it looks like. We got this pinkish, probably rock, or maybe like a sand type thing. Okay, it looks like a desert. It's like a pinkish desert. And then we also have these greener areas that probably a vegetation 
in them. You can probably see the grass load in. Yep, there must be a lot of water underground in order for all of this vegetation to survive, because otherwise, because there doesn't seem to be a lot of surface water. I thought that was water. Uh, let's find one of the lakes. Is that it? Is that all, all of the water on the surface? Oh, is it tidally locked? Okay, these are cool because it's cool to see what the back looks like when you have a tidally locked planet. Okay, so yes, there is a lot more water on the other side, but with it being tidally locked, that's actually not good for life because it's good to have that day night cycle to kind of reset the temperatures because if we take a look over here, the temperature here is negative 95 Celsius and I wonder what it is on the other side. It's going to be warmer, I think, but it might not be that much warmer. Negative 61. So it's, uh, they're both pretty cold. Oh, we even got mountain ranges here. Oh, and there are these, these are rivers too. Okay. Okay. So there's a little more water than I thought, but look how beautiful this planet is. Um, the only downside I think would be that there's no day night cycles. So you're going to be kind of stuck in the day unless you want to live here. Whoa, this is kind of a cool little desert area. You would, you would all, the sky would always look like this here, which is kind of cool. Like it might move a little bit, uh, just from the tilt, but let's see. No, look, we are going very, very fast through time right now. It's going like a hundred years a second and it never changes. So the sky would always look the same, which is weird to think about because our skies change so much. Um, but that is a cool looking planet. I think there was another earth-like planet, maybe with life. Cool arid aquarium with life. Okay. Here we go. Oh, this one has three different planets that are similar to Earth, and the one that's most similar actually doesn't have life. It is completely covered in green, I assume, vegetation. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just green rocks. Oh, whoa. I thought this was all going to be plant life, but it looks like it's all just rocks or like sand, green sand. And the atmosphere is green too. This planet's just super green. Really cool, actually. Okay, but this one and this one both have life. This one's just subglacial life um, on this pink planet, which is still cool because we got the rings. I assume like in these kind of icy areas is where we're going to have our life. Just like very simple life. And look at that sky. This pinkish purple sky is super vibrant. And this isn't even the most Earth-like planet technically in this system. This one would be at a 90. Where is it? Oh, it's 86% like Earth. And this one does not have life. Um, and you can see it almost looks like a an Earth without if you took away all the green. So this is like almost like a dead planet or one that hasn't evolved life yet because it's got very good liquid to land ratio for life very similar to earth i think um and it looks like it's probably pretty volcanically active so it could just be no life has developed yet it'd be cool if they added a thing where you could travel through time and see if life were to, to develop um but right now you can't do that so here is another Earth-like planet in the largest galaxy ever discovered. So now let's zoom out a little bit. Let's just click around in these stars out here, see if we can find a cool looking planet like this one, lava planet. Oh, it's a brown dwarf. Okay, so this is like a mini star. Uh, like between a planet and a star and you can definitely see that it, it looks like that it looks like a burning gas giant which is pretty much what it is what's in here what's in this binary system where bro where am i it's okay it's binary what's it binary with orbit lines okay so is it a black hole or something oh is it with this oh okay it's the brown dwarf i think that's pulling the star because you can see this is the star's orbit line so this brown dwarf must have enough mass to have some effect on how the star moves uh which is pretty cool okay there's a lot of red and blue ones is this a purple nebula kind of like the one we just saw maybe oh this actually that's a cool looking shape so let's look right around here maybe oh this kind of looks cool let's see this that's a cool planet with its blue atmosphere this one kind of looks interesting too uh very deserty world but it does have an atmosphere i don't think this is water this looks like it had water and then it all dried up uh, which definitely is possible this almost looks like one of those planets we were looking at earlier yeah look it totally has spots where water would be uh but it looks like it's dried up so this just is an old planet that is past its potential for life i think um and it is also tidally locked and you can see the back is like all messed up very very cool though okay let's try to find one more cool nebula in the largest galaxy ever discovered is this a star it's a red super giant okay let's take a look at this because red super giants are always cool to look at the way they are shown in space engine uh because you can see they're not fully spherical they have like bulges going around and is this a planet really this close to the star whoa look at that look how close it is uh can we actually like go land on it it has clouds on it no those aren't clouds what are they is it just colder surface oh okay i totally thought that like these colder areas they like formed in a cloud shape but that's just uh parts of the planet where 
the uh, the molten rock is colder. And whoa, that is the star. You would definitely be blinded. Uh, there's not a real way to show how bright this would be. You would just, it would just look like this. This is what it would look like on this planet. Imagine seeing this with your own eyes. Um, this is very, very cool to see it like this. And what's really cool about these stars is just how big they are. Um, like watch this. I'm gonna go the speed of light. So like these look like little mountains on it, but let's go the speed of light, which is one C and watch how fast I'm about to move. Ready, go. That's the speed of light. So that's how big this star is. Uh, for reference, I'm pretty sure you can go around Earth seven times in one second at the speed of light. Uh, and it's, we've been going for like, what, 10 seconds now? We're still like very, very slowly moving across the surface of the star. Even going the speed of light, it would probably take hours or even days to go around this whole star, which is just crazy the scale of the universe. And that is the fastest anything can travel. Very, very interesting. That was IC1101, the largest galaxy ever discovered. If you guys have a new galaxy you'd like me to search for things in, leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate you guys watching to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.